We're going to set up the main event here. Coming up is Dennis Shafikov, who we spoke to earlier. Everyone, I'm Cindy Conti for 360 Promotions, and I'm with the man, the main, the main guy for tomorrow night for Hollywood Fight Nights, Mr. Dennis Shafikov. How excited are you to be fighting here in Hollywood, California, at Avalon for Hollywood Fight Nights for Tom Loeffler? Oh, I'm very happy because fight a long time, no fight. Uh, tomorrow we see, we see. We see. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for our feature bout of the evening. Would you join me first in welcoming from Ensenada, Mexico. Come on, make some noise in here for Hector and Breeze Suarez. All right, we are now setting up for our main event, and here is the B side of the equation. Hector Suarez with a record of 12, 6, and 1. Been knocked out just once throughout his career, and on April 6th, Doug, he had an eight round loss to a young man that we're very familiar with uh, out of San Antonio training under Robert Garcia's guidance, Hector Tanahara. Yeah, and he's a solid eight round fighter. He is definitely a, a, a club level fighter. He's in against a, a three-time former world title challenger in Dennis Shafikov. So what this basically is, is the rare easy fight for Shafikov. He's generally somebody who's up against the odds when we see him and in the ring. his opponent from Mias, Russia, would you welcome Dennis Shafikov. And there he is, trained under the tutelage of Abel Sanchez. He is 33 years old. And Doug, I think there's some questions based on the fact December 9th when we saw him at Mandalay Bay, didn't seem to have quite the same snap or activity level in losing a split decision in 10 rounds to Rene Alvarado. I thought he felt the difference from fighting at lightweight and then dropping down to the junior white lightweight limit. That was his first fight at 130 pounds and to me just looking at his body language in that fight and his stamina and his physical strength it wasn't quite the same as i'd seen him in his uh lightweight title challenges he seemed stronger to me at lightweight but i understand them trying to drop down and uh, make something happen at junior lightweight he's only five foot five promotions in association with Takate, Chivas, and MGM Resorts presenting your feature bout of the evening, eight rounds in the lightweight class. Your referee once again, at the sound of the bell is Jack Reese. Introducing first on my left, wearing the red trunks trimmed in yellow, weighing in at 131.4 pounds. From Ensenada, Mexico, fighting on a Guadardo's gym. He brings a professional mark that includes 12 wins, Six by knockout, with six losses and one draw. Would you please welcome Hector El Estudiante Ambriz Suarez! And his opponent on my right, wearing the green trunks trimmed in black and gold, weighing in at 131.4. From Big Bear, by way of Mias, Russia, fighting out of the summit. He brings an impressive mark that includes 38 wins, 20 by knockout, with four losses and one draw. Would you please give it up for Dennis Genghis Khan Shafikov! Dennis, really, please? All right, now peace. Now peace. And line. All right. Trunks are good. I gave you guys both instructions in the dressing room. I just want to remind you both, please listen and follow my instructions at all times. Play duro, play limpio, play hard, play clean. Good luck to both of you. This is that rare tale of the tape where the journeyman is uh, the younger guy. <laughs> uh, and ha But there's no advantage in height or reach. Although, if just going by the eye test, it does look like Shafika is the shorter man. And we begin round number one. And Doug, the interesting thing about Shapikov is before that disappointing loss to Alvarado, there are a lot of people that believed he did enough to beat 
Robert Eastern his prior bout for the IBF lightweight title. And as uh, Abel Sanchez told you, not in Toledo. <laughs> not in Toledo, Ohio. No. And, um, you know, I, I wasn't upset with Robert Easter getting the nod in that fight, but they were two scorecards that were shutouts for the Ohio fighter, and that was just wrong. And size is certainly an issue for Shafikov, who's a great pressure fighter, and there's an overhand left right off the bat. Yeah, he's a southpaw, he, and, he, and he's a technical pressure fighter. Works the body very well. But size is an issue at 5'4", five, 5'5", five, five, and yeah. it, it is the opinion of Abel Sanchez that perhaps they fit in physically a little bit better at 130. But, Doug, when you're talking about fighters who are above the age of 30, right. generally you don't go down in weight. It's a risk to go down in weight. Sometimes it can weaken the fighter. And I don't know if that was the case against uh, Alvarado. He didn't seem as, as physical as I was used to seeing him um, at lightweight. Um, but Alvarado is a, is a real gatekeeper. He's a real spoiler. He's a dangerous guy. If you're not at your best against Alvarado, he will beat you. Or, you know, he'll at least take you to hell. And that was a split decision, by the way. Yeah. That was a very close fight. There was a, a knockdown that Alvarado was credited with, and it was uh, it was an iffy knockdown. In fact, I think the, the replay showed that it was like a split or a trip, a, a slip or a, a trip on Shafikov's part. Um, so he was winless in 2017, and there were two previous lightweight title challenges. Um, I think the first one was against Miguel Vasquez in 2014. Very, the, the worst style you could possibly put any lightweight in. Uh, against uh, and then there was Rancis Bartholomew, another the tall, rangy style. Cuban, right? Another terrible style. Uh, and you know the thing I love about Shaf because is, is after those losses, after those setbacks, he got right back in the ring, and, and he was in against dangerous opponents. I think after the Vasquez loss, he came back against a, a fellow Russian fighter who was on a like a, a KO streak, a five or six knockout streak, named uh, Rustam Nugaev. Yeah. And he beat him down, beat him down to a ninth round stoppage. It was a bit of an upset. Uh, and after he lost to, uh, I believe after he lost to Bartholomew, he came in against uh, Jamal, Jamal Herring. Herring, right, who was 16-0 and at the time. And even the, the fight after Jamal Herring, he was in against quality opposition. And so he, he earns his way back to his title shots, and I, I really respect that. Had a really hard-nosed, tough victory over Richard Comey, who's That's the fight I'm thinking of, yes. Lightweight contender, who's now trained by Andre Rozier, and will soon be in line for a title shot. And a very active round number one here between Shafikov and Suarez. Both men not hesitant about letting their hands go here in the first three minutes. And, Doug, we talk about some of the stuff going on at 1.30. Your WBC champion is Miguel Burchelt. Your BA champion is Gervonta Tank Davis. And I think one of the reasons why the brain trust of Shavikov believes 1.30 is the place to be, the IBF title will be decided by Billy Dibb and Tevin Farmer. And the WBO title, which was held by Lomachenko, will be contested by Christopher Diaz and Masayuki Ito. So right there without Lomachenko, I think there's a lot of fighters that would say, you know what, let's settle in at 130 There's of opportunity, and the title holders at, at, at 130 the, don't have the physical advantages that the lightweights had against them. Bartholomew, Vasquez, and Easter, all really, really tall guys. So we begin round number two, and who was Cynthia Conte with now? Hey guys, I'm here with the man with the golden voice. I have always said you, you're my idol, Mr. Michael Buffer. We're here fight nights, you're sitting front and center. How do you see the fights? I mean, are you having a fun night? You get to be the spectator. A great night, Cynthia, and, and it's fun to be a spectator for a change. Uh, Tom Loeffler has put on a great show here. It's the second time here at the Avalon, and the atmosphere is great, the crowd is great. The main event is going on now, so we're going to do a short interview and, and get back to it. But it's really been a great night. I'm here with my nephew, Braxton. Hi, Braxton. Radio Raheem. Radio Raheem. We know him. Yeah, we know him. The best fight night in Hollywood. Yes. And you know me. I'm very picky. Tonight was magic. Mwah. There you go. Okay. Well, you know, when it comes from radio, it means something. Yeah, listen, no, but seriously, Mario Lopez was here yeah. earlier. His... His little four-year-old got a little tired. He had to go, but you know he's a regular at the fights. 
Uh, it's just a good night, good crowd. We're having a good time. Well, we welcome you, Mr. Michael Buffer. I am so honored to always interview you. Um, I'll let you get back to the fight and enjoy yeah. fight night. Thank you, Cynthia. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I love him. Bye, guys. Get back to <laughs> And we're back here in a quick tempo being set by both men. And say one thing about uh, Shapikov, despite that coming off that loss, he doesn't look shy in there. He does not look gun shy. He's sticking his head right back into the pile. And this is quintessential Shapikov, Doug, just pressuring and getting up on your chest. That's what he does. Uh, and that's what he has to do against Suarez, who's started this fight with a plucky attitude. And so Shapikov knows he has to take some wind out of the sails. The best way to do that is with body shots, and Shafikov is very good at that. And as you see, he's, he, he's always working forward, always cutting the ring off, always getting close, but he does so with that nice southpaw jab. He's good at reaching around uh, to the body, to the liver area with his right, you know, with the right hook to the body. Uh, and he's good with throwing a, a straight left to the chest or the stomach. When you fight Shapikov, you had better have done your road work. He's going to make you really stretch the limits of your physical conditioning. It's like facing a one-man full-court press. And once again, this is Hollywood Fight Night at the Avalon, brought to you by 360 Promotions, headed up by Tom Loeffler. This is our main event, that man right there, Dennis Shafikov, taking on Hector Ambrose Suarez in our night's main event. And uh, our website is at www.360promotions.us, and there's all the social media information. Give us a like, give us a follow. Boy, Cynthia Conte is being kept busy here. Who is she with now, guys? All right, guys. Well, look who I found here, Mr. Vaughn is Mardros. And, you know, it's almost like deja vu because the first Hollywood Fight Nights, I interviewed you right over there. There was no Gennady fight yet. And then all of a sudden, you were front and center with him. And now you're here again. Talk about Fight Nights. Talk about Hollywood Fight Nights. It's another beautiful setup. Uh, you know, another beautiful sold-out crowd. I mean, it's, it's always got, you know, the first show was amazing. And uh, this one is good also. You know, the first one was really good, and then, you know, it just keeps getting better and better. The fights are getting better also. Did you did you just get here? Did you watch some of the fights earlier? I saw uh, the girls' fight, and I saw that prospect fight. I, I, the, the Ukrainian guy, yeah, he fought, so I, I think I watched all the fights. What do you think of the women fight? You know, it's a, women are coming up, you know, and I know a lot of people don't like women boxing, but what do you think? Well, I saw Elvis ran in the corner, you know, yeah. the Grand Glove, so it was it was a good victory for him. It was a good stoppage, Dang you know. Yeah. You, you don't see a lot of stoppage in women, so it was a good knockout. Yeah. And what's next for you, ever since your big uh, grand stage with Gennady? How has that been coming up? I know, it's funny. Um, I'm hearing rumors of Chavez Jr. right now, but uh, we'll see how that happens. I love um, it how we always hear rumors and yeah. you don't even know. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, we spoke. I mean, we've been talking, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. Do you want that bite? Of course, I already said yes. Yeah, you know me, I say yes to anything. Yeah. <laughs> you just okay, I just want to fight. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll let you get back to watching fight nights. Von is Martirosian. Yeah, there you go. All right. All right, Cynthia. Thank you very much, and good to hear from Von is Martirosian. Doug, I'm hearing part of his deal to face Golovkin uh, several weeks ago was lifetime passes to the Hollywood Fight Night Club. <laughs> That's not a bad yeah. deal at all. <laughs> He's certainly welcome here. Great guy.
Hey, I tell you what, Suarez has his moments. He does. Yeah, especially when he when he when he gets busy with his left and then sneaks a right hand in there. He oh. lands the right hand. But that left over yeah, the top he's getting, shook him. Yeah, he got stunned. It is just constant pressure with Shafikov. You can't rest. You can't lose focus and you can't rest. You, you know, unless you've got a lot of power, you're, you're going to have to stick and move. And the thing about Suarez, although he, he, he can move well, he doesn't have the best technique. I no. Mean, his, you know, his, 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 his punches, he kind of flails a bit with his punches. There's not a lot on him. And, Doug, if you're a fighter being moved on your back foot, on your heels, it's generally hard to punch with a lot of leverage. Now he's not getting much. And one thing Shapikov does, he constantly makes you be in that reverse gear. Yeah, and it, but it's like, it's almost like arm punches from Suarez. head into round four here of our main event Shapikov Suarez and it's been little Dennis laying a pretty good foundation here throughout the first three rounds let's see if Suarez can start turning things around we are scheduled for eight here A nice right hook from Shafikov. Doug, I don't remember, and again, I think a lot has to do with the stature of Shafikov, a fighter throwing so many straight lefts right to the body. Not hooks, not uppercuts, but just straight. straight. Yeah, yeah. they just happen to be low. It's kind of like his uh, his pet punch. Right. It's very, it's very natural for him to let that one go. And you don't expect it from a, a short, stocky yeah, guy. Yeah, you generally don't see a lot of trainers practicing that, and you don't see a lot of sparring partners doing that. No. And I think that's one of the advantages Shafikov has is just to where he's going to aim punches is something very unusual for his foes. We got a shout-out from a guy named Perry on Twitter. He says, good commentary from yourself and Steve Kim. Oh. Up watching at 5.30 a.m. Yeah. and enjoying it. Now, what, does that mean he's in the U.K.? Or yeah, geez. Down under, is he? 5.30 a.m. Anyone with the screen name <laughs> Perry is a real boxing aficionado. <laughs> Thank you, Perry. That's a lost art right there. Parrying the, the punches. Parrying, yeah. A lot of guys block punches. They put their hands up and block with their with the gloves and their wrists and forearms. You don't see a lot of guys catching yeah. that punch in in, in mid uh, mid delivery from your opponent. It used to be quite common among the world class fighters. And even the club level guys, when you look at like old fight films from the forties and fifties. But you know, the gloves were a little bit different than yeah. you used to be able to open up yeah. and, and expose your palms with the older gloves. So I think that may have encouraged pairing yeah, and, and the catching thumbs punches. were not attached back exactly. then. Exactly. That's a good point. But I think I think Shafikov has uh, underrated craft. Yeah. That's left to the arm and the, the body of uh, Suarez. Well, one thing he does, he moves his head, <laughs> although he didn't right there. He is perpetual motion in that upper body. That's important for pressure fighters. A lot of what he does is about slipping and then closing the distance and then being able to... Oh, there's a cut. Yeah. I think there was a clash of heads and there's blood from between the eyes of Shafikov. Well, it's, clo it's closer to the left eye. Well, keep this in mind. We're about 18 seconds away from this fight becoming official. And I believe Jack Reese has said that is from a clash of heads. So if it goes to the cards, uh, I would assume that it is Shafikov well ahead. Right. It, yeah. 
if, if, if the fight has to be stopped because of that cut, they'll go to the scorecards. Uh, and Shafikov would, would likely win a technical decision yeah. because I've had him winning every round. Yeah. As I know you have. I'm peeking at your scorecard, Kim. All right, we begin round number five, and Cynthia Conte is being kept busy. Who's she with now, guys? <laughs> I got the Miss Beautiful Alicia Del Valle. She's a big boxing fan. Besides, you know your traffic. <laughs> That's how I know you, girl. Well, we're number one in traffic in the world, so it's job security. <laughs> but I went to USC to be a sports reporter, so... Okay. We're trying to gauge, and now that I'm at NBC4, I cover the World Series with the Dodgers. I'll be helping out the Rams. I try to get NBC4 to cover LAFC, the new soccer team, and that's going to take a little bit. Just keep pushing. It will happen. Absolutely. The best fans, the best fans. Yes, yes, we are. Yes, we are. Let's Southern California. Mm -hmm. I think there's an East Coast bias, and they think that we don't care about sports. Hello? Yeah, well, we, we got boxing right here. Yes! And you know what? How fun is this? It is fun. Okay, women, you're here. There's beautiful women, beautiful people in the crowd Everywhere. supporting boxing. Fight nights here in Hollywood. What do you think? I think I need to see more of this. <laughs> and I think the first time I came here it was a group of four. Yeah. I've doubled it to a group of eight. There you go. And then the third the third Hollywood Fight Nights will be sixteen. Like it is so fun. It starts early. It's good boxing. Tom Lawford, 360, they don't disappoint. They're not giving us fluff fights. They're actually really good fights. And true boxing. Yes. There is blood, sweat. I mean, I've already I know. Ugh, I've touched it on the ring. La, la, la. Ah. <laughs> okay, did you see the girl fight? There I did, two. too. What do you think? I love it. In fact, my cousin Damon, he's married to my cousin Christina. He wanted to hurry up and get here because he wanted to see the chicks fight. That's see? what he said. I want to see the chicks fight. There was, it was good. Tonight. Not disappointed. Not disappointed. So, well, I will let you get back to the fights because it is the last. It is the last bout, and Dennis is up. So let's see. There should be a knockout. Hopefully, there's a knockout. So, it would be over by now. Well, he's giving him a good fight. I know this is a good thing for all the fight fans here. Yeah. All right, I'll let you get back. Back to you Next guys. Next time, girl. Yes. Mwah. All right, thank you very much. And Alicia Del Valle, a constant presence at the fight. Certainly a big boxing fan. Absolutely. Doug, looking at Denis Shapikov, I've been meaning to ask you this question. You know Ryan Garcia is an ambitious young man. He is very <laughs> precocious. They yes. want a title shot. Uh, I think me and you agree. He's not ready for the tank. No. What about Shafikov? Would they dare dip their toe Shoot, into man. that pool? Eventually, <laughs> yes. I think they need to keep their eye on him. I don't know if uh, the Flash will be ready for him this year. But maybe by early to mid next year, I think so. But I don't think they should be in a rush with yeah. him. they got to remember... <laughs> He's 19 years old. And that is the end of round number five. Another solid one for Denis Shafikov.
And we begin round number six here of our main event. Dennis Shafikov taking on Hector Suarez. Abel Sanchez is doing a good job of controlling the, the yeah. flow of blood with that cut. And here's my official scorecard after five, 50 to 45. And Doug, I, honestly, you should be doing the scorecard. The problem is be. the name was already, the graphic was already on, <laughs> had my name on it. So the next time it'll be uh, this, the, the Fisher scorecard. This is not a hard fight to <laughs> yeah. score. My, my score looks exactly like yours. <laughs> You know, Doug, that No question, disagreements here. Yeah, Doug, the question I posed last round, I, I kind of ask it in jest, given the fact that the Garcia Brain Trust believes they're ready for everybody. But I, I, I got to tell you, even despite what we saw with Alvarado and witnessing what we did tonight, it still is going to take a pretty good fighter to overcome Shafikov's pressure. Yeah. He, he is not an easy out. Yeah, and we, we haven't seen Garcia tested by this caliber of opponent with this kind of an experience in this particular style. Um, we got, you know, we learned more about Garcia against Jason Velez. Yeah. But Velez is not a pressure fighter. He's not this type of rugged cat. He's a very game and, and durable veteran with some good experience, some, some world-class experience, but not as much as Shafikov. Boy, Shafikov just raking Suarez over to the body now. Suarez taking a deep breath as he backs up. But that's an interesting matchup for down the line. And I don't think too far down the line. Just not next. Yeah, well, again, it, it, if the Garcia brain trust, and King Ra, you ask him, he's schooling Vasil Lomachenko <laughs> in the gym, um, eventually you're going to have to face a certain guy at a certain point in time. And, you know, they want to go faster rather than later. That's true. He's already headlining his own shows, and he's got the fan base to do it. It's a good. You're a good matchmaker, Kim. Yeah. That's not. A, that's not. That's. <laughs> well, I don't know. What is wrong? Well, I don't. I mean, and listen. Shafikov isn't looking like. You know, he's not looking like a 130-pound Joe Frazier. Yeah. I mean, he's looking like a well, handful for a young man. But look, Garcia is very big and very powerful for the weight. Uh, and we do know that tall, rangy guys with with hand speed who can stick and move do do trouble Shafikov. And the Flash does have that explosive hand speed and a lot of power, at least in the early rounds, at least through uh, three or four rounds. I do think that power drops off a little bit It is as evident. the fight goes on. Shafikov is still a hard-nosed pressure grinder, but at 33, it's only natural. There is some physical erosion. A lot of miles on that odometer. Yeah, he's got a lot of fights. Round number seven here, scheduled for eight. And Doug, I was thinking about this with Abel Sanchez. At his current stable, does he have a fighter that isn't entertaining? Now, that's part of uh, the, the Abel Sanchez signature. Yeah. He actually, he trains his fighters to be crowd pleasers. Yes, he does. I mean, he modified Triple G. Triple G didn't have the style he has now when he first walked into that gym. I don't know, back in 2010, 2011. He gave him more of a, of a left hook, taught him to cut the ring off, helped show him the art of body punching, and he teaches all his fighters that. And and But for guys who are naturally aggressive, like Shafikov was, yeah. he adds craft. He adds the jab. And, you know, Freddie Roach is, does a good job with that. He's a guy who 
excels with aggressive, brave, brave hearts in there, um, and and he helps refine uh, their aggressive styles. Yeah, Abel was certainly influenced by the late great Emmanuel Stewart, who believed that his fighters, he wanted them to be knockout artists. He it, wanted them to be crowd. It wasn't leaders. enough just to yeah. win. You had to be entertaining. Oh, you could just see Suarez now just bracing for those body shots. I don't think there's any doubt he's in a version of a survival mode. Yeah, the, the body shots, the body attack, it's taken its toll. He's not moving around as much, and you're right, he's holding more. And you could, you could tell the wind is officially out of his yeah. sails. There's no doubt about that. He might hold on. I mean, he might hang around to till, till the end of the, the final bell, but he's in survival mode now. He's not plucky like he was no. in the first three or four rounds. Shafikov gives guys a gradual beating. Yeah. Especially at this level. If you're at the club fighter level or fringe contender level, or if you're a prospect who's not quite ready yet, like, like Jamal was when he faced yeah. him. And Jamal was a standout. He was an Olympian. He's you a standout know. amateur and, and a mature guy and, and a terrific fighter. He's got I, a lot of promise. But he just wasn't ready for that type of, of pressure grind. Doug, I remember asking... Abel Sanchez if they hesitated taking that fight on in, in essence two weeks notice and Abel said Steve if they really thought a fighter with only 15 or 16 fights was, was ready 16 for, fights. for Dennis Shapikov, um, then I didn't have the guy I thought I had right. and literally within the first minute of that fight you realize they're on different levels at that point So seven down, one more to go here in our main event. Dennis Shapikov just putting on the hard hat and putting in a workmanlike effort against this durable Mexican, Hector Suarez. We hope you've enjoyed tonight's action. If you want to visit the 360 website, you could do so at that address right there. And there's all the social media information for the company. 360 Promotions is coming up. Well, I think at the end of the night, as we kind of review what opened our eyes, I'm going to go back to Sergei Boachuk. Of course. I want to see more of him. Listen, the for the third Hollywood Fight Nights, I think Boachuk is ready to be in the, the main event. Yeah. I, I think agree. he's ready to be a headliner. I think they need to find the toughest, most badass junior middleweight who's willing to yep. step in with that Ukrainian and make that fight. Style. Make some noise in here. It's the eighth and final round. Speaking of young junior middleweights, in a you know kid I was high on, and we actually saw on the same card that Shapikov lost to Rene Alvarado, and I think me and you... Oh, you must be talking about oh, Munguia. Oh, Jaime, Jaime Munguia. Munguia. The <laughs> Ring Magazine 2017 <laughs> Prospect of the Year. Yeah, did Don't you, tell us we don't recognize talent. Yeah, did, did you hear that, Bob Bennett? <laughs> all I got to say. Right. All I got. I'm not going to You know say, what? Not you know, say had, anything had more. that fight happened, it's a good the fight. Love can Munguia... That, it, that listen, Munguia talent. wouldn't have gone the distance Yeah, because he's, he's not mature enough yet. He's only 21. But, man, it would have been a fight Ooh. for four or five yeah. rounds. That would have been badass. And now Jaime Munguia looks like he'll be making a summer defense against his WBO mandatory Liam Smith. Good fight. Uh, I believe that date will either be July 21st or 28th. Tough break for yeah. Liam Smith. Yeah. <laughs> no. The, 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 well, Ali. for both of them. <laughs> See the, the the Saddam Ali fight. Yeah. It was a tough. It was a tough matchup on both sides. But I thought it was uh, potentially a winnable fight for for Smith. Man, Munguia is going to be a hard night's job. Here in round number eight, halfway through, Dennis Shapikov isn't letting off the gas pedal. Looks like he wants to finish this off here. He has dominated the second half of this yeah. fight with his body attack, and he mixes in these right hooks to the head. He bangs arms, too. He's kind of old school in that regard. As a matter of fact, I bet you Suarez's arms are numb. 
Kind of remi it reminds me of the uh, Rocky Marciano rolling the stars of fight. He actually oh, gave man. a guy blood clots. That's nasty. <laughs> That's just... Yeah, Shafikov doesn't quite have that type of, of damaging power, but he's yeah. he hits hard enough. He's definitely um, tenderized the rib cage and midsection of Suarez. Well, and he's banged up those arms. Shafikov, when you face him, win or lose, that night when you go to bed, you better pop in an Advil. Well, yeah. You're going to be sore physically all over yeah, four your body. Or five, and uh, yeah, you'll know you've been in a fight. Suarez is he's still, you know what? He's still got some fight in him. He's not 100% in survival mode. He's got enough pride to where he's like, you know what? This guy's right in front of me. I got to try to nail him with some right hands. And to his credit, he's landed a few, but for the most part, he's, he's taken a beating in this eighth and final round. And it looks like he will see the finish line against the hard-charging Denis Shafikov, and that's it. And it looks like Shafikov, coming off a disappointing loss, has gotten back on the win column as we wrap up the night here at the Avalon. It's been Hollywood fight nights here. Good night of action. Lots of stuff has happened. Another star-studded crowd. Doug, I think Brian Sabalo actually made a very good impression. I really fight. enjoyed watching his performance. He is uh, evolving right before our eyes. He's very comfortable in the ring. A lot of poise. Beautiful style, but there's aggression in there. He yeah. has a nice blend of offense and defense and boxing and attack. Um, I really enjoyed watching Lulu Houghton. Yeah. She's an excellent athlete. Really good technique. Lightning quick with those fists. You know, Doug, moving forward with Sabalo under the 360 banner, Boachuk under the 360 banner, you have two young pillars that you can consistently showcase out here every few months and in between other shows. And there's enough talent in Southern California to fill out the rest of the card with unattached fighters. Right, and as long as the matchmaking is good, that's all that counts. And for the record, my scorecard is 80 to 72, a straight shutout for Dennis Shafikov over a very tough Hector Suarez, but we'll get the official word in a few minutes as they tabulate the scorecards here. It's been a fun night here at the Avalon in Hollywood, California. All right, look. All right, it looks like Mike Hart is ready to go. Mike, take it away. Ladies and gentlemen, before we get to the scorecards, how about one more time for these two fighters and all the fighters tonight, right here in Hollywood, Fight Night. For the final time tonight, we go to the scorecards for our decision. Judge Zachary Young scores an 80 to 72. Judge Sergio Cayi scores a 77-75. And Judge Fernando Villarreal sees it 79-73. All for the winner by unanimous decision, Dennis Genghis Khan! So Shapikov gets back in the win column. His record now stands at 39-4-1. And, and there you see him getting his hand raised by referee Jack Reese. And in a moment or two, I have a few words to say with Cynthia Conte. In fact, there they are now. Cynthia, take it away. We're ready when you are. Congratulations, Dennis, on your win tonight. How do you feel after your win? I feel good. You feel good? <laughs> that cut above your eye, how did that happen? It was an accidental headbutt, but uh, it didn't uh, stop me from continuing and finishing the fight. 
Okay, now with this win, if the opportunity to, were to arise, would you want to fight for a world title? I definitely would like to have another attempt uh, at a world title, but first I have to become a mandatory. Uh, that's my next goal, and uh, after that, uh, give it one more shot. Alright, and you know what, everyone from around the world is watching on the live stream. Tell your fans, what do you want to say to your fans, and also your stable mates that are here from the Summit Gym. I'd like to, uh, to thank all my fans uh, around the world and fans that came to support me here uh, and wish you all the best. Thank you. Congratulations again, Dennis. We have Dennis Shabikov. Congratulations. <laughs> what? Huh? All right, guys. Well, this is all goodbye night. Thank you again. I'm your host, Cynthia Conti. Thank you, Tom Lawler. Thank you, 360 Promotions. I am so grateful to be here again. I'm bringing thank you to the fans, everyone that tuned in. Make sure Hollywood Fight Night, hashtag it, follow our Facebook, like, share, subscribe. This live stream will be on. Make sure you guys watch all the fights. Watch it again, because this was a good, good fight night, guys. All right, guys? Thank you. I'm Sunday Conti. See you guys in the fights. Bye, guys.